My friends, I've got a lot to tell you about today, and there's going to be quite a discussion on intonation, and I think it's going to be a very good discussion that you'll get a lot out of. So I'm hoping you'll stay tuned for that, and we'll get to it right after this. My friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Today is Monday, March 6th, and I've got a lot to tell you about. First thing I want to tell you is tomorrow morning I probably won't do a vlog, and the reason being we've got the fella coming to uh, trim those trees, or I say trim, he's really taking them down. He has to top them first in order to take them down, the, uh, the, the ones that are leaning over the house. So I'll probably be involved with that tomorrow, and I won't have time for a vlog. Log, I will try to capture some footage on that and maybe show you that on Wednesday. While I'm thinking of uh, tomorrow, tomorrow evening we'll be at uh, Dickie's Barbecue Pit in Rolla, Missouri. So if you're local and you could come in uh, and listen to our show, that would be great. Uh, enjoy the good food as well. Before we get into our discussion on intonation, I'll just mention that my son has gone to Texas over the weekend and uh, got that uh, rescue horse, his name is Oliver, and brought it back. And I, all I can say about that is his videos don't do it justice in terms of how poor this horse is. Uh, it, he's a big horse, so he looks big on camera and he looks like he's you know, healthy. But in real life, he's a razorback. A razorback is where the backbone is sticking up like this. You know, like ordinarily on a horse, you can see a little bit of a backbone, but mostly it's flat across there. And on a big horse, it's even flatter. His is not flat at all. It's standing up like this. His backbone is sticking up this tall, and I'm not exaggerating. I thought my son was making more out of it than, than reality, but the truth is that that horse has got a problem. It really does. Now, whether or not it was a malnutrition thing or there's just some genetic issue, I don't know. But that horse definitely has some, some issues, and, and I'm glad my son has a hold of it that he can uh, address those issues and take care of it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go to Homestead Horsemanship on YouTube. Just search on Homestead Horsemanship, and you'll find all kinds of videos on Oliver. Just type in Oliver at Homestead Horsemanship, and I'm sure you'll find we also had a little bit of a flooding issue over the weekend. The water did come up and flood the road for just a few hours, so it wasn't a big deal, fortunately for us, with all that rain that we had. And we did have guests at our rental property, and fortunately it didn't interfere with their activities either, so it worked out just fine. I did cut a giant load of wood yesterday, and then after that I helped my grandson Isaac rebuild a carburetor that he's trying to fix up on an old lawnmower. And I say lawnmower, it's a a riding lawn tractor that someone gave him. Trying to learn how to be a mechanic, you know, and so I helped him in rebuilding the carburetor. You may recall that uh, a while back I told you I found that uh, wedding band in the spring back there where the uh, lady had probably been washing clothes, washing dishes, gathering water for the house, etc. And I found her wedding band back there. Well, uh, here's a short video clip of that spring flooding uh, after all these rains. So to give you some idea that it definitely he is a spring. These days, it's kind of a wet weather spring. 160 years ago, it probably stayed running all of the time. The water tables over the years have, have basically dropped throughout most of the country, especially here in Missouri. It still does run most of the year, even now, but it just trickles for the most part. Well, I told you we'd get into a discussion on intonation. Part of what prompted that is the fact that I've got the bridge on this over the weekend, and I'm going to be doing the intonation setup on this, and so that's partly what prompted this. The other part that prompted this discussion is uh, from the question on Friday Shop Talk, and someone asked me if how I felt about intonating a guitar at the nut, and I said, no, absolutely not. Don't do that. It's a compromise. After rethinking that answer, I'm thinking that that's a little 
little bit abrupt and a little bit too black and white. So I thought I'd try to give you a better explanation of why I don't do it. I, I haven't changed my opinion. I'm not going to ever intonate from the nut. I can honestly see how it can work. I, I, I get it, but I still stand by the fact that it's a compromise. Let me just explain that even when you intonate back at the saddle, to some degree, it's a compromise. I will agree with that. But let me show you the math on it and show you where the problem comes in. And we're gonna have to almost make up numbers because it'll make more sense if we just make up numbers that are easy to understand rather than the actual numbers here because it would just get too mind crazy. Just for the sake of math, let's pretend that there's 10 millimeters between each of these frets, okay? And let's say back here at, at the 10th fret then that we're at 100 millimeters. Back here, you're a little bit sharp and you're thinking if I just move the nut forward a little bit that'll be enough to change the intonation here and it'll be fine so I agree with you that would work so let's say you just move it one millimeter that way and you check it here at the 10th fret and you go oh that fixed my sharpness it's not sharp anymore well at the 10th fret at the at the hundred millimeter mark you've you've changed it by one percent in that right and one percent is very minimal here you changed it a little bit more here a little more here a little more here you changed it by 10 percent at the first fret you know, you were trying to fix a problem back here, but you just changed this first fret by 10%. Now granted, those are not real life numbers, but you can see my point. You can make a small adjustment here and it, and it's, it, it fixes the problem here, but it really compromised these other areas. So you could say, well, the same thing happens when you do it back here. It's different. Let me explain why. Let's take the same example, 100 millimeters again, okay? And you move it by one millimeter. Here, you've only moved it by 1%, correct? But up here, you barely moved it at all, hardly at all. A tenth of 1%, if you will. So you get my point that moving it back here is a much better way to control what you're doing and fixes your problem much better because it's feathered out. You think, well, you know, what about in between here? Well, it doesn't matter in between. You don't have any frets in between here. And, and the fact is that you've, you're feathering it out. By the time you get up here, you feathered it out to nothing that no dog could hear it. So I hope that makes sense to you. And that's why I don't mess with this. See, it's like building a house. Let's just take another weird example for a second here and talk about building a house. And let's just talk about building a wall in this house. And you've marked the corner and that corner now is your steadfast point. And you're measuring down this wall and now you know where the door is gonna go and you know where the window is gonna go, etc. For whatever reason, let's just say it's critical that that window be right there at that spot that you've measured and that the door be be right there it's critical now you've you th think oh I screwed up that's supposed to be this wall supposed to be six inches longer well now all your measurements are off that's the same way with this in my mind is that you're measuring this is your this is your fixed point this is the point that you don't mess with everything is measured from this point this fret is measured from this point this fret is measured from this point this fret is measured from this point. This fret is not measured from this fret. It's measured from this point. So that's why you don't screw with this point here. This is your fixed point. That's the one constant that you don't want to mess with. And then I guess my final word on intonation is that the method that's been used for hundreds of years is not broken. So we don't need to come up with these new modernistic ideas to think that you can adjust your intonation from your nut. It's just not the way to do it. If you still disagree and you still want to adjust it there, I say knock yourself out. I don't have a problem with it. I'm not gonna argue with you all day about it. I'm just trying to explain the common sense side of it. And everything I do has to make common sense or I don't do it. It's just that simple. Black and white, that's the name of the game with me. I hope that makes sense to you. I hope I didn't offend anybody because I'm not trying to offend anybody. I'm just trying to explain to you why I do what I do and why I won't do some of these other things that are the, what I consider to be like modernistic fads, if you will. I haven't made up my mind for sure yet. Well, I kind of think I have made up my mind, but I haven't committed to it yet. And that is, I still think I want to take the bridge pad out of this guitar because I don't like the fact that that bridge pad ends right there. The other possibility, and I have done this before, is I could add a little bit more bridge pad on behind this. 
but you still have a seam there and I don't like that seam is what I don't like. I don't know if I have time to address this today or tomorrow. I may have to wait till Wednesday to address this, but I have a feeling I'm going to be pulling the bridge pad out of this before I actually set the intonation here. Well, my friends, I hope you got something out of my intonation discussion. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you didn't and you don't like it, give me a thumbs down. I'm okay with that. And I hope that you are subscribed to the channel. By the way, we just hit 89,000 subscribers and we're still climbing. So I'm hoping that we will hit the 100,000 this year, though I'm probably jinxing it by just saying that. <laughs> we will see you on Wednesday.